I've always done visuals. Even the whole time that I've played guitar in Mecha Normal, I, I've been designing posters and doing cartoons and T-shirts and designing other books. And so it's it hasn't seemed so strange to work on this project for seven years because it's really part and parcel of doing Mecha Normal and this journey that we've been on for 25 years. Uh, it, it all feels that it is part of the same thing, and and. W and I feel the same when, when you, when uh, Jean does, does does her books and her painting. I feel connected to it in that way. I feel where we are a group, and it's always like feels like a bit of a group thing because I appreciate her work and her paintings. I'm inspired by them, and over the years, that's that's given me a lot of inspiration as well to come over and we practice in her apartment and she has her paintings up and and they're great and I go I'm I'm refreshed and you know I'm, nur I'm nourished by that kind of <laughs> you know inspiration to go and carry on my own own work and it also ups the ante because there's always kind of a thing of going wow she did this great thing and I've got to I got can I do anything <laughs> approaching that so so that that so it's all part of and also the political content of Mecha Normal and our approach to music and the, what we call the music business and all that stuff has been, you know, is all wrapped up in, in, in the book that I'm doing in a sense, right? It's all part and parcel of it. My book is a continuation of the work that we've done in Mecha Normal because it has a, a similar concern uh, of politics and art but also of approach. You know, I didn't have a publisher lined up, I didn't have a deadline, I didn't have anybody bugging me to finish this, this book. I just did it because it seemed like the right thing to do, and, and it's the same with Mecha Normal. No one asked us to form a band, no one, you know, bugged us to do this or that. We just followed our own path, and, we, and it's, it's the same approach to doing, doing this graphic novel. On the screen, you see samples of a, um, a 10-page spread that I have uh, of my graphic novel. It's called The Listener, and it's over 300 pages. I just completed the first draft. And essentially what it is is a uh, novel that uh, deals with the last free election to take place in uh, Germany before the Nazis uh, seized the power. And it's a very little-known part of, part of the historical record, but it is incredibly pivotal because it led to the Second World War and 62 million people dying. So I thought I would do a whole book on this. And so it deals with issues of, of, of art and politics in the past and the present. And, and uh, this sequence that I just, it's sort of passing here, and hopefully you got a chance to look at it. In, essentially, it just uh, intercut two stories here. One of a man walking through a city at night, and he comes across a, a person who has been murdered. And then we have Adolf Hitler sketching a portrait of his girlfriend, Eva Braun. And so Hitler is creating this portrait of his girlfriend at the same time as he has ordered uh, a murder, a uh, political murder. And so I intercut these to essentially foreshadow the murder of millions with the murder of a single person. And that's, again, just trying to show how art can be used in a, in a politicized way to, to uh, present a, you know, a more complex sort of issue. Because you can take it at face value. Uh, it's just two scenes, and this is, this is all part of the story, and it happens. But on another level, it has all this, these repercussions. And also, the importance of Hitler doing the sketch is he was, you know, he considered himself an artist, and art was extremely important, uh, aesthetics were inc incredibly important to the Nazi ideology, an ideology of, of, of horrible, uh, you know, misery and death, and, and, uh, and so clearly, it's a, it's a kind of a cautionary tale, an example of how art can be used politically for not necessarily progressive uh, purposes, but for uh, purposes of, uh, of totalitarianism. And uh, so that's sort of what is going on there as well, is touching on that theme. And, uh, and again, we can look at art uh, and how one piece of art can be used by the left, by the right, throughout history, and, and it keeps swapping. And an example is obviously uh, Beethoven's Ode to Joy, which was really uh, meant to be a humanitarian kind of piece of work that was then used by the Nazis to, for their own ideological reasons. And now it is the, uh, 
and it was used by the left, and uh, uh, and uh, also now it is the official anthem of the European Union. So you can see how art travels through the centuries, and how it can be used and misused. And so it's it's a cautionary tale on that. <laughs>